Right, hello guys. Now we've come to the uh, practical hands-on side of dealing with calibrating the VCO. Um, what I have on the screen here is the app here, which you see this is the um, oscilloscope sound card oscilloscope app, which I've always used and served me quite well. And this is a tuning app. Now if we look here, we can see we have it just basically will show us. That's a... Uh, something running through there first so basically that needle will move and it's the center point which we want to be looking so that will be our zero semitone so it will be bang on the dead dead on center tuning of each key uh, here we have the sim I'll just have a use a simplified this is the Jupiter, Jupiter 8 exponential converter um, schematic and this I've just put this block on just to show this is going to the os uh, to our oscillator and we can see here I've just done a few modifications on this where we've got a 10k trimmer here which is VR3 which we'll be dealing with a VR2 50k and VR1 stays exactly the same now let's just take a listen to uh, VCO1 now just before just a couple of things I just need to mention before we start this one of the things that you need to try and make sure is that you at least leave a good sort of maybe half an hour to 40 minutes for the whole circuits to warm up these VCOs because they are analog they will need time to warm up and there is no sort of digital auto tuning etc so what I'll do is we'll go to VCO3 which is actually already calibrated and then we'll just go from C so how that's coming through on the scope Sorry, that's not VCO3, that's VCO2. So if we go to VCO1, and let's just actually have an uh, in input signal. So as we can see, now I have a front end control, which again goes into the summing input. So basically I have a potentiometer, it's tied to the plus rail and the minus rail, and the center is my center tuning which I turn on the front end for your coarse tuning and you just increase the actual resistance more if you want it to have it, attach another one for a fine tuning part anyway not going to go into that too much so I've had got that roughly about center, pretty much center position this is a bit of time to warm up and then we'll go to the next C so we've got C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, C6, C7 and, and C8 as you can see, that's VCO1. Now again, VC, I'm going to add VCO2. So that's VCO2 added. That's both oscillators now. As we can see, I'm going to take away VCO3. that's pretty much calibrated let's bend that up to C8 a little bit flat on C8 but again we can use a high frequency tracking to um, tidy that up right now if I go to VCO1 I have purposely put that oscillator out of whack so this will be I'm going in the key of C's here if we look on that tuning we can see that's way out so the first thing what I want to do, there's a couple, there's another way you can do this as well, if you need a little bit of guidance, um, is to get yourself a chart which will actually show you the tuning frequencies. I'll just see if I can quickly dig the one I have out. I have actually have it printed out, it just makes it a little bit handier rather than looking at everything on screen sometimes. Let's try not to waste too much time doing this. If I don't find it, we're just going to have to move on. Right, ah. Uh, so what I have here is a chart which shows me frequencies versus the uh, musical notes. So we can see the notes and we can see the frequencies. So again, I'm going to go into the keys of C's. So I want to be, I know my C, C2 wants to be roughly about, or should I say my C3 wants to be roughly about 130 hertz. So I'm going to find the C3 on my controller keyboard and there's a couple of ways you can do this. Sometimes it really works well if you use a long span keyboard so you can basically tune the width from say C1 
all the way up to say something like C8 so you've got that big six um, six octave range to uh, adjust your VR2 I'm going to use the Mini Brute here which has one, well it's basically a two octave keyboard and with one mid top C added so I've got three C's to deal with here so if I go from I'm going to set it into the centre position which is on zero so we've got the green light on the Mini Brute on the centre octave and that is at 612 let's just turn that a little bit and I know that should be about 261 so now I'm going to have to adjust uh, VR2 sorry no VR1 so let's so let me roughly get to about 261 Hertz thereabouts thereabouts 261 now I'm gonna go one octave what I do is I try and rather than tune actually one particular octave I will try and um, make the width be accurate between say two octaves that gives you a better spread plus and minus so we'll hit C3 which should be about 130 it's not it's 120 so let's take that down to 120 with VR1 or so we go up to 130 but 100 so we're at 130 now now if I go up another octave up to C5 I should have about 523 I haven't I've got 607 so what I need to do is I need to make the whip smaller so I need I'm going to adjust the volt per octave trimmer which is VR2 and just have a look at the API tuner and just watch the width between C3 that we're on E5 so we know that's way too big so we're going to adjust turn it to bring the actual width shorter width and this is another little trick that I kind of taught myself after sometimes don't always think to yourself right I must make sure every key is watch the needle if you can get the needle to go between say any um, value of note here so say EB5 and EB7 uh, we know we've put it and say well, for instance the needle is going L2 when we're pretty much bang on we can use that and then we can adjust the VR1 so VR1 moves our tuning to the right key if that makes any sense or if I haven't explained that too well so rather than trying to fight accurately with the tuning of the key exactly key you want you can adjust the VR1 so we can move that key into the right position so right now I'm just going to make sure our width is adjusted properly no I know it's not adjusted properly let's take some more of that no not quite there and again getting there so we've got we've got two octaves we're EB we're E uh, flat free and we're at E5 so I need to trim a little bit more off that again we see see there E5 E3 and E5 we're getting closer now we just need to uh, turn VR2 again we've overshot now so let's take that back a little bit you see that that's E3 just maybe tr try and trim that just a tiny touch more there's a few cents out not a lot in it to be honest with you let's just try and trim that again that's good that's not too bad if we can see the gap there's not much of a gap there now if I hold down my C3 I'm gonna turn VR1 until I get back to C3 So there we are on C3, C4, C5, a little bit off so what we may need to do is adjust VR3. So I'm going to adjust VR3 a little bit and see how much of it, how much, how much, how much, how accurate we can get it. So I'm going to try and trim back VR3 again which is a high frequency compensation trimmer and a 
adjust the width again, take a little bit off, and then turn C freeze VR1 till it's at the zero. taken a little bit too much off there so let's add a little back and there we have it so we see free and we see we've gone a bit sharp there on the upper octave C7 and C8 Let's bring that high frequency tracking in again. Nice. And then just check that against another one of our already calibrated VCOs. And that's two sawtooths. And there we have it, a calibrated VCO.